One of the first thing I did after I hooked up the power supply to this Prusa i3 3D printer is I hooked up a couple of uh, LED lights. These are 12 volt and there are three of them actually and they're attached to the power supply and it's less than less than one watt and this actually is the type of stepper motor that you can use as a alternator for wind turbine so if you want to check the phases there's I think three of them I just hook up an LED to it so when you turn the shaft you get alternating current. This kit already comes with a lot of the parts assembled like this motor here all I had to do was to tighten up the screws this component here is already assembled of course the frame itself is not and um, the bed itself is assembled and I just have to put it on here and do whatever uh, tightening that I have to do and then um, uh, for, for this video and I guess this is part one I'm just going to talk about the problems that I have in putting this together and things that I missed uh, the first thing that I missed was uh, I did not use washers on some of the parts. I can correct this later because when I got this some of the parts didn't have washer so I, I didn't think of using washers on some of the, uh, the screws but obviously it's better to put washers on them especially on some of the more critical parts like the frame here if you put the washers this would be more rigid and stable things like this is less critical this is a blower fan for the motherboard so it's probably not gonna shake and uh, come off but uh, some of the other parts are you you probably should put washers on them so they don't move and uh, come off so that was my first mistake uh, the second mistake was uh, when I plugged this power supply in it didn't work and then I noticed that I have to set it to 110 when I plug it in and I check the voltage um, I was for DC I was only getting 10.5 volt and uh, then I, I read the label 1110 230 and obviously you have to switch it to 110 if you are in the US now some of the power supplies they have an opening here that there's a slot here you can put your screwdriver in and there's a switch you probably cannot see it there's a switch that you can slide down to 110 but this power supply here there's no opening you just have to find like a toothpick or something stick it in inside and and uh, push the switch to 110 the switch itself is very um, I guess sloppy is the word uh, there's no resistance it's very light it's, it feels almost as if it'll just fall down by itself but um, anyway turn it to 110 and it should work and then of course uh, I have it actually plugged in now so I have to be very careful and you have to be too because this is live AC here and the cover underneath the cover you will see the markings L for line or live N for neutral and then you have ground these are the connections so red would be on line uh, and black would be on the neutral and um, and the yellow one would be ground 
and then these are the DC wires. So um, the two on the left hand side are the positive and then two on here are negative. And then I when I first checked the voltage when it was on 220, the voltage which was uh, 10.55. After I set it to 110, then um, it, it was uh, a little around 12. And you have a trim part here, and you can adjust the voltage. So I just set it to 12.3. Uh, this is supposed to be a regulated uh, power supply. So it should give you whatever voltage that you set it at. But usually when you have uh, something under low, the voltage would drop a little. So I'm going to recheck it after I hook up everything and have everything running to see if it is uh, the kind of voltage that I want. I would probably set it at about 12.2 volt. And uh, yeah, those, so those are the things that you, you immediately have to check. And close the cover so you don't electrocute yourself. Now also the wires are very taut, they're, they're very tight. So you barely have room to make the uh, connection. And when you're connecting these, of course unplug your, your AC cable and you put your index thumb, uh, index finger underneath the circuit board when you are tightening try to you know push down on the uh, screws to tighten it otherwise if you push too hard you can damage the power supply board so you try to you know put your finger in the back of the power supply so it doesn't bend too much when you're tightening the screws so of course do this with the AC unplugged and uh, the other thing I noticed when I put this together, this is the new integrated uh, the Arduino board. This is the Atmega 2650. Now, this whole printer is $154. And I look at this board here, this is like 50 something dollars on eBay. And this is an integrated board. The ones that they have before is they have a Arduino and then they have a ramp and and one sits on top of the other. I don't really know that much about the Arduino, but this is this is a more elegant design and you see the stepper motor drivers there. And some of the ones I looked at they came with uh, heat sinks and this one that I have they don't have heat sink although there's a small fan here which is good and um, these um, drivers I think is is a is good because you can unplug them if, if one of them go bad if they overheat they're about a dollar or two just unplug them and put in a new one so I'm not that concerned with uh, it overheating. Um, yeah, so um, this is supposed to be the upgraded uh, design. Um, the frame itself is is uh, sort of like a plywood, plastic coated, uh, somewhat fragile. So they gave you an extra piece for this motor mount, uh, motor guy here. Um, and uh, now all I have to do is put together the, the motor, the setup. And that's where the instructions um, comes in. Uh, it's not very clear though. I have to kind of figure out the, the thing. When it comes to mounting this section here, the instructions aren't that clear. And some of the software that they loaded is uh, their compressed files. There is like a RAR file and um, if your computer doesn't have the uncompressed uh, 
plug-in a software installed then it's not going to work and and in my case I have a Mac Mini here so I have to download uh, uh, some file to uh, to uncompress this before I can I can open it up uh, there's a Cura software 14.07 version and is an old one as and it is in Chinese so um, I'm sure you can download the Cura file and all that from the internet but I'm always a little hesitant when they tell you oh you can download this and you can download that because that's when you going to start to have a problem although I did for uh, the 3D printing I did download SketchUp so I can at least learn to do some basic 3D designs um, so I can print instead of uh, downloading something from Thinkiverse and uh, and print so that's where I'm at I spent a couple of hours on this already um, I am pretty sure I am probably going to install some kind of uh, 12 volt fan maybe maybe uh, I'll print something and uh, put a fan here so that uh, the power supply would be uh, cooler. Usually when electronics fail they, they are mostly because they are overheated and this frame here you can see they have the cutout for the fan already but um, the power supply is mounted this way and the back of the power supply is like, is like a solid, solid metal so um, maybe I'll mount the fan over here instead of in the back maybe it will work in the back too but then uh, all the ventilation is over here so you have to be careful uh, the wires are very tight and you have to bend them so that it gets out of the way of the hot bed and don't touch this thing here when there's plug-in because it's all AC live here the uh, connectors are insulated but still you don't wanna you don't wanna get shocked uh, yeah oh yeah the L LED or LCD display there are two connectors here and it's not that clearly marked uh, for the wiring and I had to look it up um, one uh, is for JP1 is for the LED connection to your motherboard to the Arduino and two is um, for the uh, SD card connection on your Arduino so it is this is not clearly marked here this just says one and two it is all the connections are marked pretty clearly on the board itself for the other wiring so um, yeah that's that's where I'm at um, I'm not sure I can make this work but uh, for the hardware setup those are the problems I have encountered they're gonna be a, a lot of uh, calibration and uh, modifications that people make but you know this is the belt tensioner people make uh, new adapters for them but this seems to be working right people always say this is too loose I press on this if it goes half half an inch then it's okay. It's like uh, your fan belt on your car. You know, you press it down, it shift it about half an inch. And the rods that I got, the couplers, hey, it's just a plastic tube. And most of the other printers that I saw comes with a coupler, sort of like a spring-loaded coupler. But this should this should work too. I mean, um, this they use this for a reason because it's cheap, 
and it works. Uh, the plastic tube here can work just like a spring. It is a soft minor vibration. So, you know, I'm not going to knock it until I try it. And you can always buy these couplers later on. And these screw rod here, they seem to be true. They're not they're not bent. If they're bent, then you're going to have a problem when, when you're doing printing. So these rods here seem to be okay. And these are the hardware that came with it. Or the washer and the screws. And uh, one problem I had with uh, when I was mounting the uh, power supply. So I, I started using the washers. And when I came to this screw here, when I added, tried to add the washer, the screw is too short. And I don't want to use too long a screw because then it, it might start poking into the underside of the power supply. So I omit, omitted the washer here. And on one video that I watch, they or he didn't use this brace here. Instead, he put the nut from here. From here, he put it over here. So that would make the frame stronger and, and I guess it would flex less. But I, I just did it the way that you're supposed to do it. I just make sure that I put the washer here and tighten it down and um, um, if it flexes um, I can make a little brace here and screw down the printer to my uh, to my MDF board this is this is a, a top that I made sort of like a workbench top that I made before I put some melamine or <coughs> formica on it so this is pretty flat I can always make a brace and secure the whole thing uh, another thing um, this is a rasp a file that came with the tools it came with uh, like a bag of tools I couldn't yeah this here comes with screwdrivers and some Allen wrench that has a <coughs> sorry, special tip. Um, this rasp, I use it when I'm tightening down these screws. This one I didn't put a washer. So I jam it in, in the back here. Otherwise when you use your Allen wrench to turn the screw here, that nut will turn too. So I just jam this file back here and when I use the Allen wrench to turn to tighten then uh, it, it will tighten instead of the whole thing moving uh, together with a nut. So this is what I'm using the rasp uh, or the file for, for now. This is probably going to be used to file your uh, the 3D plastic parts that, that you make that's gonna have a lot of rough edges and stuff so um, that's where I'm at uh, maybe I'll spend another couple of hours on it later and uh, see if I can put it together alright thanks for watching